it is my great pleasure to sit here with my good friend, uh, Louis Lord Nelson, um, who is in my, in my, like she's, she's a UDL pioneer. Continuing along that vein, <laughs> right? Uh, Louis has uh, started a podcast. Uh, and that podcast um, is called UDL in 15 Minutes. If you go out on your devices right now and pull it down, you will love, how many episodes are there now? Um, we just did 13. Thir just posted 13. So lucky 13 episodes. This will be 14. Uh, yeah, and it's 15 minutes, 15 minutes a piece, right? So uh, I don't do the, I, I'm not person to do the math, but you can listen to it on your flight home. If you are <laughs> flying someplace, you can listen to all of them and get caught up. And they're super succinct um, and they are fantastic to listen to. So for our network and learn, here's, here's what we do. We usually run some questions from our audience. Uh, so Louie and, and her guest, which I'll have her introduce, uh, we'll kind of go through their, their conversation. And then uh, we'll, we want to hear some uh, questions from you, from the audience. And then also tweeting out those questions, staying social uh, with the hashtag UDLIRN. And we will have some of our folks uh, out there in the Twitter in the Twitterverse uh, tw tweeting in some questions, and then we'll kind of shoot them your way. Uh, so Alex is in the in the back, and she'll be running around with a microphone. She's standing up right now. There she goes, a wave, um, and uh, she'll she'll pull some of the questions from the audience. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so again, here's our agenda. So this is welcome. This is all done. Um, and then where did UDL uh, in 15 minutes uh, get its start? That's a huge question that I would love to know. Um, I think I know a little bit. Uh, and then, uh, then we'll bring up uh, Camille Wheeler um, and uh, you'll be able to run through it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So let's start with that first one. Where did uh, UDL in 15 minutes get started? Gosh, so about, um, honestly, it was a year and a half ago that I had an idea to do a podcast and I, um, I was interested in the medium because I listened to tons of them. But to be honest with you, this would be, it's not a UDL fail. It's just that um, I didn't feel like I had the capacity. I just didn't know even how to get started. And I would like Google around for it. And then every answer I would find felt too big for me at that moment. Um, but, uh, and then it would go on a few months and then I'd come back to it again. And then I'd go on a few months and okay, what am I gonna need to invest? And um, it was one day driving home from the gym and all of a sudden I was like, UDL in 15 minutes. That sounds really good and that's doable. Okay, I'm go. I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready to roll. Yeah. And that's all it took. I, I, remember, I remember you called me up and you're like, Brian, I got an idea, I wanna do UDL, I wanna do a podcast. I'm like, dope. And then you go, uh, you go I'm gonna do UDL in 15 minutes. I'm like, oh, that sucks, it's so good. <laughs> I was like, this is going to be fantastic. And then you told me the people that you were going to have on it. And I was like, this is even, this is even better. Because one of the big pieces that you, and, and step in, of course, but one of the big pieces that you're pulling out is you're pulling out practitioner voice. Yeah. To, to go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, explain there, are, um, there are a bunch of us who have been working in the UDL community for a long time. Mm -hmm. And as that community ex ex you know, expands, um, there are some voices that are heard a lot and that's wonderful and it's full of awesome people and I know my voice is heard a lot too but I know there's so much goodness going on all around the world there's so many people doing fabulous things in their classrooms in their schools in their districts and um, I wanted to use the medium to get their voices out because if, if everyone if people could just understand that every day it's happening mm -hmm. it's happening everywhere mm -hmm. good deep quality thinking is going on about how we're providing spaces so that every single learner in your environment can become an expert learner yeah. and i just i think that can go out there and so to me that's what this medium is all about and it's where my passion is so i'm really excited i was looking at my uh, data just um, this morning and i've reached 35 countries now nice yeah listeners so yeah. it's just kind of cool when all of a sudden you have listeners and i know they're not people i've ever met because right. they're not countries i've visited yet yeah yet <laughs> wink wink y'all yeah 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 i'm hoping um because the best part of going around is seeing what udl is like and how people how people talk about it and how it's interpreted in all sorts of different cultures um and this is just another way for people to share that yeah, I, you know, Louis, I love it, and I'm gonna get off the stage here in, in just a moment. Uh, but, but I love it because it, it really is the celebration of of that huge that huge tapestry that is everyday practitioner, yeah. right? Like, like you said, like we have some really great voices and really great personalities, and we've heard a lot of them today. But one of the like people that are that are haven't been heard and are out there doing it 
Like that's fantastic. I think it's I think it's really um, the work. It really honors the spirit of UDL. So so I appreciate it. I I know these folks will appreciate it. If you already have all the podcasts, you know that you appreciate it. If not, you need to go out and get them. So without further ado, I'm going to let you bring up your guest, and okay. then we'll get started. Yeah. All right. Remember, folks, tweet out your questions, right? And then we'll be running around for some live questions. If you're out there in the Twitter sphere, UDL IRN, tune in, watch us, uh, and catch the network and learn and questions from there. All right. Perfect. For that, I'm out. All right, thank you. <laughs> All right, Camille. Mm -hmm. Oh, there we go. <laughs> thank you. All right. So I'm going to keep chatting while Camille comes up. Um, normally, I am recording this. I've moved out of my walk-in closet. I graduated. Um, I now sit at my desk <laughs> and record these, created a sound um, system for myself. And um, it's just done in, in my home, right? And usually I have the headphones on and I've got the microphone right here and the little sound protector. Um, but I'm on my own and I'm, I'm reading like the introduction and then the close. And then the guest is on their end. We don't see each other. We're using an, um, an online data gathering service, which is voice gathering. Um, and so we don't see one another. So this is a unique experience I've never had. Um, Camille hasn't been interviewed for a podcast before, so she was incredibly brave. She responded to that email that went out through the um, IRN saying, hey, if you'd be willing. So um, she actually said, I don't know if I'm the right person. I said, oh, yes, you are. You were the first person to respond. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so here you are. So I'm just letting you know that um, in the beginning of this, I'm actually reading the script that I'll use because then I will lay over the music. Uh, maybe if you've listened to the podcast, you hear that. But we'll just start our conversation like we always do. But I'm going to share with Camille, and I'm going to remind her, the same thing that I'm going to tell you, is that when I record the podcast, because it's an audio file, I have the power of editing in my hands, and I use it. Because naturally, we all do a lot of ums and ahs. We'll get in the middle of a story, and we'll be like, oh, can I start over? Because I just, okay, yes. And so I always tell my guests, just pause and start again and tell your story, because I can go back and fix that, right? Um, and then on the times when I like hit the music too early or you know my own things, then I can edit for myself also. So you're getting a live version of something that I've not done this way before, but we're just going to go for it. And we're all doing this just on the fly. But remember this morning when I said the echo chamber, that in the UDL community, we're so awesome at this because of that flexibility part? That's what we're playing with right now. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and read the introduction, and we're just going to flow through this podcast as I usually do. All right. So in three, two, one. Hello, and welcome to the special UDL in 15 minutes where educators discuss their experiences with UDL. I'm Louis Lord Nelson, UDL author and leader. Today's episode is being recorded in front of a live studio audience at the UDL IRN Summit in Orlando, Florida. <laughs> I'm talking with Camille Wheeler, who's a learning coach at Sunflower Elementary in Lawrence, Kansas. Today, Camille is going to share how she and fourth grade teachers in her school adopted Show What You Know to find out what their students really know. Hi, Camille. How Hello. are you? I'm great. Overwhelmed and extremely nervous. <laughs> I understand. I know. I'm well, sorry. thank you so much for coming yeah. on to this network, Learn and Live, Learn Live, and uh, here at first live UDL in 15 minutes. Really appreciate it. So uh, Camille and I found out something immediately, that we have something in common, other than both loving UDL, that we both moved to Lawrence, Kansas about the same time. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was there for three years. She still lives there. Mm -hmm. And she taught the daughter of one of my best friends who still lives in Lawrence, Kansas. So it's a really, really small world. As a friend of mine said, it's uncomfortably small if you're nefarious. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, okay, on the way back to UDL, would you describe Sunflower Elementary to the audience and what is the profile of the students that you serve? Okay, we're a, a K-5 elementary school. Um, we have roughly 460 students, um, maybe 40% free and reduced, um, roughly 80% white, 20% other. Okay. We probably have three sections, roughly three or four sections in each grade level. Nice. And 
You're a learning coach uh -huh. at Sunflower. Could you share what that job entails and how you weave in your passion for UDL? Absolutely, and I do have a passion for UDL. If I get tears, it's because I'm not kidding, I do, but it took me a while. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we would hear about it and read about it and it just, it, what clicked for me is when someone said, well, we're not changing the students, we're changing the environment. And I was yeah. like, oh my gosh, I knew that. But when someone told me that, it clicked. Yeah. So I could take that along with the UDL guidelines, which I take with me everywhere, and help the teachers understand there's research behind it, which we need to know, but we really want to know how to put it to practical and usable use in the classroom. Yeah. So that's what I try to do, take the guidelines, help them identify variables, and then what can we do to enhance the lessons. You know, I think what you just brought up, that what triggered for you was that not changing the child, changing the yes. environment. And that yes. really, um, but we all have our different ways of coming into the framework. And I addressed this a little bit this morning, but I think that's part of the complexity of sharing it with others because it's finding that right message, which is why I love doing the podcast, because different people, of course, share that message. But I'm always fascinated to hear what was the, what was the trigger for people um, and how they came into that. So it's lovely to hear that yours was yes, changing the environment. It was. And you know, it's something I think as educators, we know we're right. not going to change a yeah. student. But we have so many options to change the environment to benefit who they are. Right, and I think the other part of that message that you took in very quickly was that it's the barrier is within the environment, the barrier is not within the learner. Right. And that's a little harder for people because once they start to dig into that aspect, it's like, whoa, what are you talking about? Because that kid brings this in with them and you're like, yeah, you know what? We bring in who we are as a person, but context, baby, right? <laughs> and we've had great conversations over the word bar barrier yeah. or variable because people have their own perception of what that means. Right. So yeah, it's, it's been great. Yeah, awesome, awesome. Yeah. Okay, so now it's time for your story. Okay. Um, people are gonna love hearing what you have to say about those fourth grade teachers and what they put together. So go ahead. All right, and now before I say that, I will say we have lots of grade levels that do great things at Sunflower. Oh, yes, fourth we'll grade is what we, Yes, and fourth grade is, is what we chose to talk about it, but I had a couple teachers come to me and say, okay, we are teaching the standards in ELA. We have a resource that we use district-wide. Mm -hmm. We have a weekly assessment that we give to um, check for student uh, understanding, but we don't feel like we're getting the information from the students that they know. We know they know main idea, but we're not allowing them to give us all their information. I mean, how awesome is that? Yes. That thought, right? Yeah. So um, I pulled the guidelines out and I'm like, hmm, let's see. Well, that falls under action and expression. Mm -hmm. that, so that, mm -hmm. okay, so they identified their variable on their own. This, they knew this was the variable that was holding them back. So then we thought, okay, we, use the, we teach the standard, we use the resource, how can we change the assessment? So they designed a very, um, we, we had an original name for it, a show what you know, mm -hmm. because that's what they're doing, they're showing what they know. <laughs> yes. And so they provided options. Um, every week the, the, the kids get a, a planning page, well, a brainstorming page first, a planning page, and then they choose to show how they, uh, what they know about the information. Okay. Um, the planning page and the brainstorming page stays the same every week. Now, just in the um, session before this, a, a lady came up and we were talking about it. She said, well, why don't you have an audio version of mm. the planning stage and the, brain, the brainstorming, right? It's a continuous learning process. I was right. like, oh my gosh, that's such a good idea because right now it's all on paper. Right. So when they first started it, the, the teach, they were very structured. And then as they went along, they released that control to the students. And that is amazing when you see fourth graders, they're learning main idea, they're getting that direct instruction, but then they take it upon themselves to plan out how they're gonna show it. They brainstorm all the different ideas, then they plan it out. And we've had iMovies. A lot of kids choose paper pencil, which mm -hmm. I think is very interesting. We have, um, we use a platform called Seesaw, so we have some students that present theirs uh, uh, through audio mm -hmm. because that's how they're most comfortable. So they're, they're, the teachers are 
assessing the same information. They're just getting it a different way. Right. Uh, so what came to mind was that as you were saying that the, um, the teachers were releasing that to the students slowly, to me, it was this perfect example of scaffolded learning, yes. but not just for the students, but also for the teachers, because they were learning to probably let go and move and shift from being the teacher to the facilitator. And so they were taking on something new, but they didn't like jump into the 12 foot deep end of the pool. They all just kind of waded in together. Yes, and, th and that's a great point because when we bring up UDL, it can be so overwhelming. Like, oh my gosh, where do we start? So at the very beginning, even with the fourth grade teachers, we went through and we validated what they were already doing. Mm -hmm. So there, you know, the instruction with the, e uh, the ELA was wonderful. It was just the assessment part that, that they were having problems with. And we just, ha I remember saying, we just have to try it. Right. Honestly, are we going to get worse information than we've, that we're getting now, right? right? What we're getting now isn't as effective as it could be. Um, so we just tried it. And I think the other great thing about the example is, like you said, you all did a deep dive into action and expression, looking mm -hmm. for different ways they could show what they know. But inherently, um, it, it draws in other parts of the framework. And so um, we speak about intentionality. We need to have intentionality in our use of the framework. But even with intentionality, we still bump up against, right? So I'm thinking about all the engagement is there because I'm assuming that there are learners who were either not previously successful on assessments or maybe they didn't finish projects. They didn't finish this kind of long-term work before, yet in this process, now they do. So you've mm -hmm. kept them engaged all the way through. Yes, and we were just talking about that. Um, uh, one of our um, uh, administrative mm -hmm. uh, ES, uh, ESC administrators was over at the office talking to our uh, or our school talking to the principal, and a, and a fourth grade teacher came in with work from students who they've had behavior issues, don't really get into ELA, whatever, and they did it and they produced something awesome. They knew main idea and details and you could tell by the product that they right. they produced it wasn't question answer That's great. it was a product they created and sh the teacher was so excited so yeah. and to see her smile yeah. you know it, w it was great yeah. yeah and I think that's the other benefit to when you have um, a concentrated look at the framework you have somebody with you who's acting as a learning coach I mean you're your role is so valuable, and I know there are teachers literally around the world that wish they had a coach in their environment um, that helped them along in not only using the UDL framework, but also the expertise that you share. So could you talk a little bit about where your role sat with the creation of this idea? Well, first of all, I, I felt like I gave them permission to do it. And yeah. I, I didn't, but I felt like they just needed someone to say, sure, we can try it. Yeah. We're doing what we need to do. Yeah. We're just asking for it in a different way. Right. And then we set and planned. They implemented it. Sometimes I would go in with the, fr the, the guidelines mm -hmm. and observe a lesson. To, you know, I would show them what I, I saw and then we would meet probably once every two weeks and we would talk about if they were getting what they needed and if not, what can we do to change? I mean, it's a constant. Mm -hmm. I mean, it will never, yeah, yeah. It never end. We'll get... So as you're in your coaching role, do you tend to take strategies and methods with you? Um, is it an interchange of ideas? Is it um, you're going and listening? I'm sure it varies, but can you kind of talk about that? Yeah, it, it does vary. I would say with UDL, I, once it clicked for me, mm -hmm. I could take it to them and say, okay, this is what the UDL framework is. Mm -hmm. This is what I think we can do. So I was more direct with this approach just because it was so new. Yeah. And then once I felt like, okay, we, we're going, we, we have some buy-in, then I'm more of a listener and a guider and... Right, um, so when you're sharing your ideas, do you do like, well, I, well let me tell you what this idea is, but this is where it came from. It's mm -hmm. because it came from, oh, okay. I do, yes. Awesome. And. Um, our principals buying us books. We've had person-to-person um, -person PDs. We've right. had uh, podcasts that we listen to. Okay. Yeah, and we do a lot of Great. discussion. And we do a lot of teacher shares. It's so organic because the fourth grade teachers will share their successes 
and their mistakes, and then other teachers are like, ah, oh, yeah. we're hearing it from a teacher, yeah, yeah. someone who does it. Okay, so my la I think my last question, because I've got to be good about my time. Um, so with those teacher shares, could you describe what those look like? Are they always within grade-specific teams? Do you do school-wide sharing? We've done a little bit of both. Okay. Um, we, and I think the most productive was the school-wide sharing, and I just think I could stand up and talk to them about it, you know, our principal can stand up and talk to him about it, and then the people in the back are like, yeah, well, right. are you in a class with 30 kids? Right, and that's fair. Mm -hmm. uh, but when the teachers stand up, they stood up together, they explain their show what you know and why they did it and where it came from on the guidelines, right? They were looking at action and expression so that they could refer back to the guidelines. Right. And, and they shared, and we had a first grade teacher that took what fourth grade teachers were doing and implemented it with first graders. Oh, see brilliant. how awesome is that? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's brilliant. And it's so hard to share those, but I'm like, oh, if they wrote up those lesson, I just that's when I'm like, ah, oh, if they wrote up the lesson plans and there was a video recording of it and just the compare contrast part about that. That'd be beautiful. Well, and we have then had cross grade level shares where the first grade teacher has come to fourth grade and said, okay, this is what I did. And then they communicate and say, oh, you know, try this, try that, or I've changed that. And I'm there, but a lot of times if they're talking and leading the discussion, I think that's more powerful than if I come in and, yeah. and tell them what to do or try to tell them what to do. I understand. All so, right. Yeah. Well, I, I think Camille has done a fantastic <laughs> job here at live up on the stage. Thank you so very much. <laughs> well, thank you for having me because I love to share the process. Yeah. Yeah. I do. Thank I you love so to share our journey. Right. Well, you've done a great job. Thank you. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and do my little outro here okay. that goes with the UDL in 15 minutes. So it's uh, for those listening to this podcast, you can find supplemental materials like an image montage with closed captioning, that montage with audio descriptions, a transcript, and an associated blog at my website, theudlapproach.com forward slash media. And finally, if you have a story to share about UDL implementation in 15 minutes, you can contact me through the udlapproach.com. And thanks to everyone for your work in revolutionizing education through UDL and making it our goal to develop expert learners. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. All right, yes, okay, we're gonna stay right here. <laughs> it's better not to know. <laughs> so if you have any questions, like you want to ask uh, either Billy or you want to ask uh, Neil, uh, please just kind of raise your hand. Alice is running around with the clip of mic. She was more than happy to pick up uh, what, your, what your question is. Um, but there's also, there's some questions that were embedded like, in your conversation, like what's your UDL story? How do you share that? Like, like those are big pieces. And you can, you can also ask those questions. Anyone? Are there any questions? I know this was yes. Here comes Alex. <laughs> this is just like a talk show. It is. <laughs> it's a question about um, using podcasting. Uh, do you rehearse this with the person that uh, you're podcasting with? So I choose to do um, a Zoom call or Skype uh, beforehand. So. Um, if a person contacts me or I contact someone, then I first set up that call in uh, 15 or 20 minutes. We talk through this process. I give them tips, things that they'll need to have on their end of the deal, um, how to prepare. And then we talk about and narrow down what story they're going to tell. And, um, and then I give them a kind of a minute type scope so they can think about what they want to share within that amount of time. Yeah, but that's as far as it goes. I encourage people to not come with a script because when you come with a script, it just sounds like a script or else people start to add in ums and ahs to like make it pretend like it's not a script. Um, so it, it works better when it's just bullets. Yeah, yeah, good question. Hi, so this could go to either of you. Um, I really resonated with what you said earlier, Louie, about that we're all kind of in an echo chamber where most of us are educators or have some background or some connection to that. Um, this is kind of personal to me that I don't work with educators anymore, um, but I'm sure both of you interact with people who are not educators. How do you explain UDL concisely 
to someone without using maybe education jargon that we're all very comfortable with, right. but it's to somebody else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I can go and talk first. You want to well, talk first, first I can put a can I put a plug out for your book? Oh, sure. The, des the um, <laughs> design and deliver. Well, thank you. <laughs> and I will say that because at the beginning of her book, it talked about a universally designed environment, mm. and that to me made a lot of sense. Um, it like. Um, Oh, well, and now I'm going to go blank with the, oh, the, the examples. Classroom. Being able to move through a classroom, so the physical barriers that might be there, or the communication barriers that might be there. Or even like uh, the curb cut out of, cut out of mm -hmm. a sidewalk so people could um, yeah, all, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So that made sense to me of things outside the classroom that you're like, oh, this is you know, a designed environment, and you don't think about it really. Yeah, the, so the, the lesson learned for me that I like to think I've learned by now, but it took me about like six years <laughs> um, of like airport conversations and stuff or air on the airplane. I, somebody asks me what I do. I start, I talk, I just say, you know, I work with educators and then I maybe say I work in this framework called Universal Design for Learning and, you know, if they're interested, they say, well, what is that? And then I say, if you don't mind, could you tell me what you do? Because then if they tell me they're in the medical world, or if they're an architect, or if they're an IT designer, or if they're, so usually people block themselves into some sort of a, you know. And then I can shape my answer about UDL to connect to who they are. I can make it relevant to their work or their life. Um, and that works the best. Um, and again, that took me, oh, it's an embarrassing amount of time. It took me to figure that out. It's not about you, Louie. It's about them. They asked the question. Yeah. So, um, I, I, so I, don't, I probably didn't give you as precise an answer as you're seeking. But yeah, that's, that's the way I go after it now. <laughs> the benefits of student teaching in 1991. I'll just put it that way. <laughs> Okay, so Brian is calling me over, but I actually have a question. So oh. I'm going to take my turn first and fight him. <laughs> uh, I have a question for Camille. So you mentioned your fourth grade teachers sharing uh, their stories with teachers, other teachers in the building. So do you create any kind of formal community of practice type of thing where people have a chance to share their success and failure stories, or how does that happen? Are you asking if we practice first before they? No, no. I'm if sorry. you create any kind of community of practice, so connect if there's a formal network, how do people oh, share stories? Oh, is I'm it sorry. just yeah. in passing in the hallway, or is there something formal where they get to connect and, and learn from one another? Oh, yeah. Uh, yes, we do it in a, during either a staff meeting when we're all together. So during a formal time uh, during the day, it's, it's planned. And we, you know, we have hallway chat and uh, what I hope we can do is have teachers start observing other teachers well, that do it. Well I was just going to ask you if you guys did that. We we'll haven't really yet but yeah. we've talked about it and that's okay. that's something I think would be beneficial. Does that, an that answer your question? Yeah. All right so this one comes from the Twitterverse. It's for you again Camille. You, you, are t you turn, into a, turn into a rock star on the Twitterverse. Yeah, you know, I, you knew not, that it was going to happen. I'm not deserving of this. That's why I'm so <laughs> nervous because it's all practice and all teamwork. That, well, exactly. So that's the question, right? So the question from the Twitterverse is, how are you growing your UDL in your building? Is it top down? Is it bottom up? Is it some kind of combo? It's a little bit of both. All right. Our principal's out there. He, yeah, it's building wide and it's a little bit of both. Our principal brought in the information to us, came to me, we delivered it to the teachers, but now they're yeah. spreading the joy does that make yeah does that no, make it makes sense? absolute sense yeah. and that's a great question because I think a lot of people think I mean let's go back to Katie's UDL talk this morning the UDL yes. fail and I think um, I'm not going to go so far as calling it a UDL fail but a lot of people think you're supposed to march into this top down or bottom up or it's supposed to be this one thing you're supposed to have this one path there is no one path right because it relates back to implementation science and the theory but the, the fact is you wade in Right? You just you wade in as you're working along and you hope that you have a good community of connection. 
So whether that's a bunch of teachers working together, or whether you've got a, a, you know, the principal supporting it, but you, you, you weighed in together. Yeah. That's exactly right. And the teachers that we got on board were strictly volunteer yeah. to start with. Now that's bonus right there. Right. Not being voluntold is a huge Yes, no, no thing. one was voluntold. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's <laughs> kudos. That's and, awesome. and we have um, the support of KU being in Lawrence. So yeah, we yeah, have yeah, that yeah, aspect that. of support too. <laughs> yeah. Just a little. So we're lucky there. Yeah. Just a little support. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Awesome. Okay. Any other questions? Oh, you got one. I know. Um, this question is actually for Louie. So, Louie, um, you have been focusing on uh, classroom educators uh, and they're telling their story, which I, I appreciate so much. Um, you don't get to hear that very often. So it's actually a two-part question. The first part is, are you thinking about adding in, say, administrators or some other folks? Okay, awesome. Uh, I want you to talk a little bit about that. But then the second part of that question is um, uh, just that I, I guess it's just more of appreciation and not part of a question. But I just appreciate the fact that we're hearing those voices because we don't hear them very often. And now as I'm talking, I'm coming back to my question. <laughs> Are there other ways that you could recommend that we get the story out? I mean, UDL stories are like, they're, they're, they're hidden under the bushel, right? We don't get them out and let them shine. Do you have ways that you're thinking besides the podcast that we could be considering telling our story? Um, yeah, they aren't formed very well. So I, um, you know, like, so, Teacher Tube and um, one of my what's the other education big one the Lucas Foundation does, Edutopia. Oh. You know they have these they they have fabulous videos that are professionally done and sometimes I think um, at least with conversations I've had with other educators people get a little um, overwhelmed with thinking about how to create such a professional looking video and other people are fine they'll just they'll put stuff up but I would. I would love to see more reflective videos, meaning we'd see a mix of this design conversation and then seeing the example in action. And then the third part I really, really want to get is student voice. That's mm. my next part is not, I shouldn't say my next part, but that's, I want to add that in. So if I can figure out how to do the podcast like five days a week, <laughs> I would, because there's everybody within the educational melu is a part of this, and I think their voices are also important. Um, it just made sense to start with the classroom teachers, and actually, Sue, I was staying with classroom teachers. Um, so Camille and I had another teacher earlier, but um, stepping into the coach outside of the classroom, this is a little earlier than I anticipated. I thought I was going to stay with teachers, but. I felt comfortable with sharing the stories once I got to know, you know, these educators. I thought, okay, the, the story is strong enough that it will communicate well, and I can continue this vein and lay this foundation. So, there you go. You know, we interviewed some students about uh, some of the things we were implementing, and almost all of them appreciated having a choice. Yeah, yeah, that's always the big one. Mm -hmm. I think it's the one they feel the most. Mm -hmm. um, and so they can acknowledge it, and they've got a word around it. Yeah. They don't have a word around a, some of this other stuff. We have to give them the vocabulary, which is a huge part, and it's an important part. Uh, and I think they should learn that vocabulary. But initially, yeah, that's where students can really talk about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Anything else? Uh, so the podcast, it sits on several, it, it you know, sits in um, the iTunes and Soundcaster. Um, the easiest place, though, is the website is theudlapproach.com. And the reason I say that is because I do the podcast, but I always produce, like I talked about, there's a video montage. So Camille is busy pulling up pictures for me that will go along with what we just talked about. And then I take the transcript of this, which is always available, and that becomes the closed captioning for the video montage. So that now makes it available. And then I also do audio descriptions of that same video montage 
um, I think there's, a, there's an unfortunate assumption that you know, people are like, oh, well, if somebody's low vision, then they're not going to be watching a video montage. Well, you know what? Maybe they want to. Maybe they want to know what the pictures are. So I have a video, um, an audio description file available there, too. So that's why I send people to the website, because all those other supports are always there. But then I do an associated blog, is what I call it. So I'll take an idea of what we just talked about, kind of do a little spin off of that, and create a blog on it. I need to get better at pushing those out, but that's what it is. <laughs> so I have a couple of, so this is a thank you gift to Camille. So that's the new coloring book. And I thought that she has demonstrated being a UDL rock star. Yeah, so yeah. There she is. Fantastic. So uh, Camille, if they want to follow you on Twitter, where do they find you? I'm at Wheeler Camille. All right. Wheeler like four wheeler. Camille. So W H E E L E R. Yep. Done. Okay, yep. and we will uh, we will definitely put that up and tweet that out. Um, and then Louis, if they want to find you, are you on Twitter? Uh, are you? <laughs> yes, you are. I follow you. <laughs> At Louis Lord Nelson. L O U I L O R D N E L S O N. It's right up there. <laughs> yep, that's, uh, that's why I asked. Um, so thank you very much uh, again uh, for, for doing a podcast inside a network and learn. And thank you to the audience for uh, asking some great questions. And uh, I think that's what will close it out. All right. All thank right. you thank very you, much. Thank you, everybody.